This video is about learning how to use the rotary on this Ohm Tech Polar and actually doing some glassware. So there you can see, first thing I did is I grabbed a bottle that would be for a test bottle. That would be about as tall as I'm dealing with. And there's just not clearance in there to, uh, to get the rotary over it or under it. So I had some one inch thick walnut stock and I cut some little square blanks out like that. And then I had some no-slip uh, neoprene feet rubber feet material. And I just cut a couple pieces to put on the bottom because I, you know, I don't want this slipping around when it's running because that laser does, uh, you know, move pretty fast and change directions fast. So the acceleration could make it slip. And there you can see they, you know, won't slip. Then I took some spacers that I had and put a screw down the middle of them and put that in the middle of the block to face up to fit in the little holes on the bottom of the feet on the laser. Um, this is just to keep it from slipping off. There's no way, you know, the laser has some rubber feet on it, but you want to make sure uh, it can't slip off. So I use spacers, but you could use nuts, washers, or anything else. Then I pried it up and uh, got each one so that that little spacer was up in the center of the foot there and uh, everything nice and solid now. It's up in the air an inch and you can see that the head clears the bottle. So this is something I think they really should include with this laser. They should make some spacers and ship with it but um, you know, the problem you're going to run into if you try to do anything uh, larger than about inch and a half. And then you have to plug it in. It um, little plug there that just snaps in in the back. And those two switches you have to throw to make the rotary work, supposedly. Um, it didn't work all, all the way for me, but I'll show you in a second. And I took the little level and just checked what the level on the machine was. It's off just a hair. And then I made sure that the bottle was adjusted to the exact same level. So that it would, um, the head would be traveling parallel to it. And there, um, and there it is. You know, you can see you definitely have to set this up in the air for probably... Um, any, anything over an inch and a half, I'm going to say. But it's pretty easy to set up. And then I went through and I started trying to get some settings to uh, work with glass. And I played with a bottle first and I got it pretty close. I was still having, having a couple issues. And there I've got my glass set up on there, first glass. And if you remember back the last video, I did the ramp test and uh, came up with a focus gauge. And that's what I'm using there. And I will tell you that these, um, the lenses that I changed to are just amazing compared to the original one that came on it. So the cloud ray lenses really do work good. So I got that all focused and in line and I'm going to uh, upload a file. And I use this controller. It's easiest for me to, um, to use this. You can do it through light burn and stuff. I'll show you in a second. But... Uh, this, this was easiest for me. And this is just another, my first test. I, uh, I bought an extra glass. I had to make five, so I bought six just to uh, be sure I had enough. Give me one to play with in Rune, which I actually did. And started the first glass. And there you can watch it. That screen is great. You can watch, watch the... Uh, progress and it goes on and you can also see the amount of time it took exact time at the end but I'm getting a really beautiful burn uh, pretty neat I'm, I'm getting just like a frosting without any really big chips on it uh, this took a couple you know I played with a couple di different settings and I like this the best and this is my test class but you can see uh, everything shrunk down on it, it didn't it slipped on the rollers um, the heavy end of the glass was on the undriven roller because of the way you have to adjust it and uh, it slips so now another thing is when you first power this on I find you've got to push that back and trip that uh, limit switch on that movement otherwise you've got uh, it'll sit there and grind away it won't zero zero and then I also have to hit the escape key you can see that's still turning there and I just hit the escape button on there and it stops that from turning so it zeroes it out so now I got my settings pretty good. And, um, when you do glassware, you have to wash it with alcohol just to make sure there's no grease on it. Um, you can see I've got rubber band wrapped around that 
moving arm there to take some of the play out of it. And then one thing that I had to come up with is a weight to fit inside the, uh, the glass. And there you can see I found an old buffing wheel that fit perfect. And I put two lead weights, one on the inside and one on the outside to keep it in place. And then there's that little black piece of plastic I taped on there to align my glasses and keep them from shifting. So that's what I wound up doing, you know, to get the set up right. And then you move the um, the laser in into the uh, line to mark for the number one that I'm using. Um, then I focus it. Now I'm using my controller, but you can do this in light burn with the down Z key too. And then I'm going to do a frame. I've uploaded my file to the controller, which makes it really easy for me because I can always repeat this without the computer on. And then I'm just going to uh, hit start and see how this run comes out. I think I've got it now and uh, like I said I really did get a, a beautiful um, frosted finish without any really deep fracturing like I was getting on the, um, the blue diode lasers. They were really making it rough and you know nasty but uh, this one, I, I was able to really fine-tune the settings on that bottle. And let's go look at light burn, what I did. So um, I did artwork, just a couple, you know, a little bit of text. And then I went in and I, I set up the, uh, turned on the air assist, and I turned off the bi-directional. I made sure that I only went in one direction. I wanted time for the glass to cool between just to give it a, a cooling period so it wouldn't crack or expand. And that really did work good. Um, you know, I figured if I did bi-directional, it would really stay hot and it could cause crack problems. And then when you look at the uh, camera, you can see that it's off when it's at a different level. But here it is, here's my second run there. So you can see that one came out perfect with the weight on it and you know, no problems with it, no slippage or anything, and that was the first first attempt. So you can see I've got it all solved, and now it's time to start running the um, the rest of the glasses. And that's that little one that you want to make sure is aligned when you move the um, arm into position. And again, take the weight out and got a beautiful job and I'm just using some 1200 grit wet dry paper just make a couple light passes over it there's really no shards on this so the way it's doing it's kind of melting it in it's really weird but it looks beautiful I don't know what kind of glass they're made out of or anything else but um, I'm really happy with the outcome I you know I, I couldn't get anything near this good out of the uh, diode laser it was all shattered and fractured looking around the edges this is nice clean edges so let's load up another one, and once you get one set up, they all, you know, they all go really quick. You just have to um, set it on and move that so the two arrows align down there. And this controller it really was worth installing. Um, really made it good. And then I can frame it, and then just hit run. And another thing that I ran into was I had to tape the that switch for the drawer when you place the drawer in. I had to tape that closed otherwise I was having trouble. And there you can see through that hole in the front there what it looks like that way. And um, you know really uh, it wound up taking eight, 8 minutes and 14 seconds per glass I think it was. And it would have taken half that time if I had gone, you know, if I had burned in both directions. But I really didn't want to because I got better results in my testing with just going in one direction. And again, these I'm not using anything on there, no masking or anything else. And uh, it's just what I found was when playing with the initial settings, just getting numbers right. Um, was what gave you the best results. You don't want to go too deep, and you you know you just really want a nice uh, nice frosted uh, artwork. So I'm just running five more here, and I'll, I'll bore you with some more shots. And you know this controller really is uh, you can watch it work in progress, and 
Here's my new setup. I'll probably be doing an update about it. My laptop died and I had to uh, get another computer. So I got this little um, B-Link box. That's a Ryzen box. That's really good. And I put a shelf on the end of my cabinet there to hold the computer, keyboard and stuff. And um, you know, that's working out good. And here I am on the last glass now. So, you know, once you get one worked out and you get them set up like that, they all come out perfect. I'm real happy. I can't believe how nice a job this does on glass. It really does a beautiful job, and I think a lot of it is because of that cloud ray lens. That um, that really uh, did seem to solve just about all my problems. So, okay, let's go back here and look. And this was when I first tried starting it up. I first tried turning on this, setting up this rotary and turning that on. And that didn't go good. The um, the spacing and the number of pulses and stuff, even if I read them from the controller, gave me artwork that was stretched out way, way, way too far. So um, I wound up playing with that. And then finally, I just, uh, I didn't use that anymore. I just walked away. And, um, you know, I, I tried it, but it just didn't work for me. And then the camera, you can see the camera is slightly off. You can see the artwork is a little further than the glass, and that's only because of the depth of field it goes off. But um, basically the center way, it was okay. So I was able to use that to, to get the artwork centered. And then I, was a, I used 100 millimeters per second, and I used 30 and 30 power on there and turned off the bidirectional and turned on the air assist. Um, and that really did help keep everything cool and working right. And those are what I used in my final numbers. I played with other ones, but nothing worked as good for me. And then I figured I'd just show you. I've been doing a little bit of leather with it, playing with that. And, uh, oh, I did a beautiful job on the leather. I don't know if anybody wants to see that in a video, but I could, you know, update that. But I'm just showing you. It's a little bit of engraving, and um, really, it's just wonderful. I'm, I can't believe how nice the job this does compared to, um, you know, I was using all the blue diodes for a while there, and uh, they just didn't do as crisp and clear and sharp a job. So there it is. I made my wife one of those hair thingies she wanted um, for her hair. Let's pull it out of there and take a look at it. Okay, I just got to clean that up now. Use a magic eraser on it and seal it up and stuff, but beautiful job, I think. And, uh, you know, I can, I can always do a video if somebody wants one. But anyhow, I just thought I'd show you what it, what it took for me to get the, um, rotary working and to do some glassware and, you know, the easiest way I could do it and how I had to weight it down to get it done. And just the beautiful results that I got with this is just, um, just really, I'm, I'm extremely happy with it and it does do a good job now. And here's that all cleaned up there. You can see it really came out nice. I'm I'm really happy with this. And there's a chopstick that I put in there for, you know, my wife to use it. And a quick pic picture of it in her hair. So you can see she was real happy with that too. And here's some final shots of the glasses. That, you know, I tried to get a little bit closer up, but it's really hard to, to get them in the picture. But you can just see how nice and um, everything's not all shattered or anything like that. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.